Hi, I'm Tim McCurcher from c Media Relations. While we have some extra time on our hands these days, we're gonna take this opportunity to go over some of the differences between the SeaDoo RX PX300 and the RX TX300 for you, the viewers at Watercraft Journal. So while we have this extra time that hopefully is not gonna to last too much longer, we're gonna get on the water soon, but let's take this time to learn a little bit more about the similarities and the differences between these two premier SeaDoo performance models. While both of the watercraft have the 300 moniker, that means they share the same part, which is the Rotax 1630 Ace high output engine. It's a small, compact 1.6 liter engine pumping out 300 supercharged horsepower. That's a lot of power in such a small little engine, but that's on purpose. That's part of the ACE engine philosophy. ACE stands for Advanced Combustion Efficiency. And what that means, it's an engineering philosophy for our engine designers and builders over at our Rotax plant in Austria. They look at every element of an engine and figure out how to make it more efficient. That means making more power without making it bigger and heavier how to be more fuel efficient, but not give up performance. And the 300 horsepower engine is really the epitome of all those good things coming together. While both of the models share the same engine, that means they're both gonna have very similar performance. But that's where some of the similarities end. Performance wise though, let's focus on that. So both of these watercraft are gonna top out about the same speed you're gonna be in the very high 60s, just below 70 miles an hour for a top speed for both of these watercraft. And acceleration, I mean, this is really what makes you giggle. The acceleration on both of these watercraft are insane. So we focused a lot of that power on our zero to 60 time. In fact, the RX TX will run zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. It's the quickest watercraft in the industry and you can reference other watercraft journal tests to verify that but part of the quick acceleration of the rxtx and the rxpx is also thanks to an exclusive feature called launch control launch control is a performance feature available on the x packages and the way launch control works on a watercraft slightly different than it would a race car or a motorcycle that is based more on controlling the RPMs at certain time frames to get quick acceleration. So the way it works on a watercraft is redirecting the nozzle propulsion. So let's back up for just a minute. So if we're gonna go do some drag racing, whether it's a formal hydro drag race or it's just racing your buddy down the river or across the lake, maybe you're betting for who buys the lunch of chicken wings. So whatever it might be, uh, you wanna win the race. So it's all about acceleration. No matter what the brand is these days, uh, the high-end performance models have incredible power. So when you grab a handful of throttle, and if you're not sitting just right, the watercraft can launch out of the water. And if you're in a drag race, and you grab the throttle, and your buddy grabs the throttle, and you jump out of the water, he's gonna have two boat lengths on you and he's gonna win and you're gonna lose the bet. So launch control, we're making it easier to accelerate faster. So the way that you activate launch control, it's through the variable trim system or VTS controls on the left handlebar of the X models. So while you're in forward, you simply hold or depress the up and down button on the VTS and that activates launch mode. So that drops the nozzle. So all you have to do when you're ready to go, you grab the throttle, it's gonna keep that nose driving down because that trim's down all the way. But you don't have to do anything after that. As you gradually accelerate, the system will automatically raise up that nozzle to give you maximum top speed. So this is effortless. And again, it's just a little feature, technical, trick that we have in our back pocket to help us accelerate faster than any other watercraft. And again, that's an exclusive feature standard on the RXPX and the RXTX. Now let's talk about some of the other differences. 
The engine is a commonality between the two. One of the other commonalities is you can get it in both of these colors either way. You can get the TX and PX in the California green, and you can get the TX and the PX in the Eclipse black and lava red for a slight upgrade. So you can have matching units on the same trailer but have different models. And in fact, there's a Can-Am Maverick X3 that shares this same colorization, kind of Iron Man-esque uh, look that it looks really cool if you're towing it with that. But anyway, let's get down to the differences between the two. Because you might want a high-performance watercraft, but you don't know which one that you want. So here's the big differences. It's really below the bond line. It's the hull. It's how these two watercraft handle. They handle completely different depending on what you want to do. So if you're a Sea-Doo rider that's looking to go really fast from point A to point B, and maybe you're going to bring a passenger half the time, or maybe two passengers, and some extra gear, you may consider the RX TX. Again, the TX is a bit longer hull, and it's based on the ST3 hull. ST3 stands for Strong Stable T-Shape. Now that T-shape, you'll see in this close-up footage where it drops down in the center. So you're running on a narrower uh, center pad when you're charging through chop. And this center T-section allows you to penetrate chop, whether it's a cross chop, head on, or a tail chop, very efficiently, and also maintain your line. So you're super confident whether whatever chop you're, you're going through. Now the edges of the hull, this is the main difference between the two models. The RX-TX has what we call hard chines on the edges and every other sit down watercraft in the industry has hard chines. But what it does on this model, it allows the TX to lean over to a slight, uh, slightly, but to a point it'll stop. Whether it's at idle, uh, at the engine off or running full speed through chop. It's gonna lean, but then it's gonna stop. And it's designed to give maximum stability in all conditions. So it's very confident inspiring when you have passengers. Now the big difference to the PX is that chine. This is the T3 hull. Stands for tight turning T-shape. This was the original T-shape where it has the drop down center pad, but the big difference is on the edges of the hull that have what we call a soft chine. It's much more rounded. It's not a hard edge on the T3 hull. And what this allows the, T, the RX-PX to do is lean really, really deep into the corners and allows it to turn tighter than any other watercraft in the industry. No other production watercraft has this soft chine effect that the PX does. And it's also why this is really set a whole new standard in racing when it was launched and the ability to turn tighter than any other watercraft. So if you're buoy course racing or running around crab traps or even through marsh channels or mangrove channels, this provides ultra precise handling. So let me give you this analogy. If we wanna uh, equate these to vehicles on the road, consider the RX-TX as a super high-end sports car maybe a Ferrari, uh, even a Charger, a Porsche, and let's call the PX like a superbike. So let's line up that sports car on the end of a runway and that superbike on the end of the runway. Both of them take off going full speed down the runway. Let's say they get up to 180 miles an hour. They're going the exact same speed, very fast, side by side but the experiences of driving that vehicle are completely different. The sports car, again, it's super stable. It's more comfortable to have a passenger. It's more comfortable to have a gear. Where that super bike is a much more interactive, skill-focused experience. So that's really the best analogy I can give between the RX TX handling and the RX PX handling. Now, one of the other common, uh, common design elements that both of the watercraft have is the integration of our exclusive ergo lock system. 
As we mentioned earlier, we want small compact engines for performance, but it's also to, for our uh, BRP designers to design the watercraft around the rider rather than the engine. So this ergo lock design is really to connect to the machine. And when you connect to the watercraft, you're more confident to pull every bit of performance available out of it. So the more your body is touching the machine, the more connected you are to it. So the ergo lock design really includes multiple uh, features, but the main element is the seat. The seat pushes the rider forward of the engine where we can go really, really narrow. So you'll see the RXPX, the ergo lock seats really, really narrow so you can hold on with your legs and tuck your knees up under the knee flares and hold on with the strongest muscles of your body. So when you're turning those really tight corners, it's pushing you down into the seat rather than trying to high side you. So again, you have more control, you're able to stay on the power longer and really throw up huge walls of water and push your skill level. So those are some of the main differences between the RXPX. Again, for the really expert rider looking to uh, turn really, really tight, really, really aggressively and charge through chop very precise and have a more motorcycle-like experience. Where the RXTX, again, incredible power, incredible uh, speed and acceleration and designed to go to point A to point B really, really well, no matter what the water conditions are. So if you'd like more information on the RX PX300 and the SeaDo RX TX300, please visit one of your dealer's websites. Uh, that's really a focus right now, rather than going into the stores. If you can't, go to their websites, call one of the sales experts. You can also go to SeaDo.com for more information and look at the various reviews on the Watercraft Journal. So until then, keep living that sea life the best ways you can. <laughs>